Map types are a really powerful tool every TypeScript developer should know. So let's figure out how to use them and let's add them to our tool belt. So let's dive straight into the code and let's figure out how we can use the map types to make our code much more robust. Let's say we have a type events here and this has an add property and a remove property. Now, what we want to do is we want to say we have a user actions object here and this is of type on events. And what is this on events? What kind of type? We have an on add property here, which is a function and the on remove property, which is also a function. So basically this on events should have an on function for each of the events. Now we could create an on events type like this and could then say on add and on remove like this. Now this works perfectly fine. But as soon as we change something in our events, we can see what the problems are with this approach. So if I say move here, we can see that everything still compiles. And we don't want that because you want for each of the events an odd event function and on add and on in move and on move function in this case. This of course cannot be achieved if we create them manually that this will automatically create a new on type, but we can only achieve this by using map types. Let's think about how the shape of this on events type should look like. We want it to have all the property keys of our events, but prefixed with an on and an uppercase first letter of our events key. So what we can say here is we say type event keys and we say key of events. This is like a helper type, which we will use and is event keys here now says that if we have a key here of type event keys, we are only allowed to use add, remove or move as a string here because this is only allowed to be the key of our events. So what we now can do with this is we can create our map type. We remove these fixed types here and we say, okay, the key has to be in event keys. You can see we have used our brackets here and as a value, we can say we just want to have any function like this. And now we can see line 12 does no longer compile because now we of course have to change this to add and remove because now only the property keys of our events type are allowed. Now what we also have to do now to make it compile is, and that is one, uh, one step in the right direction, is we have to add our move function here because otherwise this will not compile. Of course now we have the problem that we don't have the on prefix, but we can change that. We can use template literals and use this key here because this key is just a variable. You can call this anything you like, but I like to call this key. What we now say is S and then use specticks and we will use template literals. I already did videos about template literals. You can find it in the info box, but also in the description below. And we can use this template literals to tell TypeScript, hey, we want an on prefix. And then we use our curly braces with our dollar sign and then access this key here. And now we can see our code does no longer compile because what we now need to do is we need to prefix all our properties with an on because we tell TypeScript, hey, we want our property keys to have an on prefix and then the key. Now, the last thing we have to do is we have to capitalize the first letter. How can we do this? We say capitalize like this. This is a so-called intrinsic utility type from TypeScript. We pass it our key here and we can see now the code does no longer compile because now we have to uppercase the first letter of our events keys. And now we can see we have already achieved what we wanted. We have our events type, which is like our base type. And we have our on events, which is a map type, which derives from these events. Now, if I change something from remove, for example, to delete, we can see here this does no longer compile because this is not found. And now I can change this and we can see here I get auto completion. I, I can change this to on delete and we can see now the code compiles fine. So we have our events, which is like the base and our on events, which is completely dependent on it. So we don't have to change it manually. Now, this is already really nice, but let's make this a little bit more generic. So what we can say here is, we can say, okay, instead of this being an dependent on the event and on the event keys, we can say here, we make this generic. We say on T extends object because you want only to be able to use it with an, with an object type like the events type is. And then we say, key has to be in key of t because here 
we don't want this event keys anymore. We want to be, be using just the keys of this type we pass in. And now we get an error because we can see here this key is not valid to be passed to the capitalize. Why is this? Well, this key can be something else than just a string because keys of prop of objects can also be like numbers or symbols. So we have to restrict this. So we can say in case of this key extending string. So basically if this key is a string, in this case, we say, okay, we want to have this template literal, this key. Otherwise, we say never. And what this never does basically is it filters all the properties, all the property keys, which are not a string. So the never type is really something interesting and really powerful type. And I will make a video which I will go more in depth about it. I already did one. You can check it out in the info box or in the description where I will show you how you can use the never type with the satisfies keyword to make exhaustive switches or exhaustive if else cases. But let's go back here and fix this. We say instead of on events, we say on events like this. And we can see it's now perfectly fine again and is working as before, but now in a much more generic way where it can pass in any type you like. So to recapitulate what we did, we created a basic type, an events type, then used a map type with a generic to create a new type from it, which changes immediately when we change the base type. If we change one type, then the other ones will automatically also change their shape. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something useful today. If you did, maybe leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay updated for the newest TypeScript stuff. And let me know in the comments if you have certain topics you want to get covered in future videos. See you soon. Bye.